Let's get started on today's notes over quadratic transformations, day two. Today's notes are going to focus on horizontal translations as well as vertical stretches and compressions or vertical dilations. Your notes look, might look slightly different from mine, but all the content should be the same, so just follow along and fill in your notes. Our first example. As you can see, this example is different than the examples that we had yesterday. Notice that everything that we're looking at right now is inside the parentheses, okay? So let's first create a table of values to kind of see what we're looking at here. Let me erase that right there. All right, so I'm gonna create an input-output table so that I can take these points and then graph it on my coordinate plane and see what this has done to our quadratic parent function. So recall that parent function from the notes from yesterday. When I input a negative six for x, negative six plus three is negative three, and negative three squared is nine. And I'm just gonna go through this table and do the same thing to every single value that I input for x. So negative five, when I plug that in, I get a value of four for y. I get a value of one. When I plug in a negative three, that's when I get my value of zero for y. So that's gonna be my x-intercept. When I plug in negative two for x, then I get one for y. And then I get four for y. And then when I plug in zero, I'm gonna get positive nine. And I'm just gonna graph all of these points on my coordinate plane. And I'm gonna start right here, because I can easily, I can just visually tell that that is my vertex because on either side, left and right, I have the same y values. So starting at negative three, zero, that's gonna be my vertex. Negative two, one, is a point and negative four one is also a point. Now let's go to the next values where I have the same values of y. Uh, negative one four and negative five four. And then I'm going to get a negative six nine and zero nine. And that's my y intercept. And that's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and state our domain and range. So our domain looks to be the same, all real numbers. Our range, because we haven't translated it vertically, we haven't moved it up or down, it's going to stay y is greater than or equal to zero. But my vertex has been shifted three units to the left. So my vertex is now zero, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Three units to the left would be negative three, zero. Okay, so this is what's changed, my vertex. So that's very interesting because when I added three to the inside of my parentheses, the graph has been translated three units left. So that's the big difference here. The graph has been translated And shifted three units left. Left. A lot of students, because that's plus three inside the parentheses, they want to move it right, but horizontal translations do the opposite of what you think they would do. And the best and easiest way that I can describe this, and I've described this a number of ways for Algebra One students is to get this vertex back to its normal vertex of zero, zero, what would I need to do? I would need to add three. So that's the best explanation that I can give Algebra 1 students without just confusing the heck out of them. So then let's write, write our rule. And remember, our rule is going to contain f of x, and f of x just means y. So our rule will look like this, okay? Everything that we're writing when it's a horizontal translation, it's gonna go inside of these parentheses, okay? Those vertical translations, those were outside parentheses. But remember, they do the opposite of what you think they would. So this f of x plus three will actually move the graph, the entire thing left three units, and it still has that same pattern. 
still goes from our vertex, it's going to go out one, up one, out two, up four, out three, up nine, and so on and so forth. So let's do our next example. f of x minus 5 raised to the power of 2. So I'm going to plug in each value uh, for x and figure out my value for y. So you can pause the video and do it for yourself, or you can just let me do it. When I plug in a 2, I get 9. I get 4. 1 and 0, then 1, 4, and 9 for my values for y. And I'm just going to take these points and I'm going to graph them on my coordinate plane. And again, I see my vertex is right there. These y values are the same on either side of that. There we go. And I'm just going to graph my points on this coordinate plane. And I can easily see, I'm starting to see a pattern. I've been doing this for two days now. Out two, up four. And then obviously it's going to go out three, up nine. And that's what it looks like. So my domain looks the same. Looks to be all real numbers. My range, we haven't translated it up or down, so it's still going to be y is greater than or equal to zero. However, my vertex has been shifted to the right five units, which means my vertex is five, zero. So this is what has changed in this particular problem. So the difference between f of x equals x squared and f of x equals x minus five squared is the graph has been translated five units right. So that's what we're gonna write here. And again, it does the opposite of what you think it would. This is, this is what a lot of Algebra 1 students struggle with, is when they see this x minus 5, you associate negative 5 with moving left. But in this case, we are moving right, 5 units. So our rule becomes f of x minus 5, okay? And that's our rule. We obviously don't need like an exponent of 2 in our rule because we're just, it's just f of x. That's just our rule. It's what we do to our function. All right, let's go on to the next example. And this is where we start exploring vertical stretches and compressions. Actually, I'm going to change to a different color. Okay, so f of x equals 2x squared. So we're obviously going to be exploring what that little number in front of our x squared does to our parent function. So when I plug in each value of x into my function, what do I get for y? So when I plug in negative 3, I get 18. When I plug in negative 2, I get 8. And then I get 2 and 0, 2, 8, and 18. And so now I'm just going to take these points and I'm going to graph them on my coordinate plane. And I see the first thing I notice is that right there, 0, 0, has two y values on either side of it that are exactly the same. So I can tell that 0, 0 is my vertex. And I'm going to go out 1 and up 2 in both directions. I'm not going out 1, up 1. Look here. These y values are 8. Okay, so when I graph 2, I'm going to go up 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then on this side, I'm going to go 8. I can't graph any more y values. This only goes up to 10, and these y values in my table go up to 18. So that's my new parabola. That has a different pattern than every single parabola that I've, quadratic or parabola that I've graphed thus far. So let's look at our domain. Has it changed? No, it's still all real numbers. Our range hasn't changed. It's still y is greater than or equal to zero. Our vertex hasn't changed. It's zero, zero, but there is a difference. Our pattern of points are different. So the difference between our parent function and f of x equals 2x squared is that the graph got narrower. All the y values were doubled. They were multiplied by 2. 
So all of our y values were doubled. We call this a vertical stretch. I like to give the analogy of taking a rubber band and just stretching it up and it makes it kind of skinnier and narrower. That's what this does to our quadratic. And our rule looks like this, two times f of x, just like that. All right, let's go on to number four. In this case, we have a different type of number in front of our x squared. We have a fraction. We have a number that's less than one. Our two was greater than one, right? And it made it narrower. So what do you think that that fraction in front of our x squared is gonna do to our parabola? Well, let's graph it. When I plug in negative three, four x, I get four and a half. I'm just gonna write it like that. You can write 4.5. Two, when I plug in negative two. When I plug in negative one, I get one half. Zero, I get zero. One, I get one half. Two, I get two. And three, I get four and a half. And I can see because I have the same y values right here, this is going to be my vertex. So that's what I'm gonna graph at zero, zero. And now I notice instead of going out one up one, I'm actually going out one up one half on each side. And then let's look at the next one. Instead of going out two up four, I'm gonna go out two up two. And then instead of out three up nine, I'm gonna be going out three up four and a half. So this is what my parabola will look like. Okay, so our domain, has it changed? Nope, still all real numbers. Range is still y is greater than or equal to zero. Vertex hasn't changed, that's zero, zero. But there is a difference from our parent function and this function. The difference is that the graph got wider. All of our y values were halved. So our rule is gonna look like this. One half times f of x. And remember, f of x is just fancy schmancy for y. So we took half of every y value and that made it wider. So let's think about this. What if I took a third of x squared or a fourth of x squared? The smaller that fraction is in front of x squared, the wider it's gonna be because I'm taking a smaller portion of that y value. If I go back to number three, if I made a bigger, if I put a bigger number in front of x squared, like possibly three or even a hundred, well, that graph is gonna be much narrower. So as our, the number in front of our x squared gets bigger, our graph will get narrower. As it gets smaller, it gets wider. So we call number four a vertical compression. Think of it as compressing it um, and making it wider. Okay, so let's look at our day two recap, the effect on the graph of our parent function. So f of x equals, and let's change my color here just because I want to, f of x plus three squared, what did this do? That translated left three units. That was the effect. f of x minus five squared, that translated right through five units, sorry. And remember, those did the opposite of what you think they would do. And then when I had a value in front of our x squared that was greater than one, our y values doubled. If it were a three, our y values would triple. If it were a four, our y values would quadruple. So our y values doubled, which made it narrower. And then 1 half x squared, our y values were halved. And this made it wider. And that concludes day two of our quadratic transformation. So again, today we focused on horizontal translations, 
and vertical stretches and compressions. I hope this helps you.